Winter finally decided to show up. I wish I could say I'm dressed like this because I just got off the lake. Nope. Just got done shoveling. Probably 18 inches of snow. Gotta love it. Cuts into fishing time worse than work. So, not gonna hit the lake this evening. Wow, this is up close and personal. Trying to do too many things at once. Figured you guys asked to see my go-to uh, sort of like dead stick, rattle reel, tip-up setups after watching my jigging spoon video. Thank you so much for checking it out. So, figured we'd dive into some boxes here. And I'd go through a few of my favorite uh, set line setups for walleyes. Now when the walleyes are really aggressive, this umbrella rig, sometimes you can get five for ones on a single jig stroke. In Minnesota you have to clip the lines on all of them but one. Clip the hooks, the hooks, the lines, don't clip your line. You have to clip the hooks on all of them but one. But when they're really aggressive and they're eating this vertical jigged in four feet of water, they'll hold on tight enough that you can just get a picture with them before you let them go. Worth a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this away now. Anywho, where was I? So first off, some of the stuff I'm gonna show you, I don't even think it's made anymore. Uh, I've been diving into the same stash of uh, set line baits for eight or 10 years, some of them even longer. Um, and I know just looking at this layout right here, about half of them I think are discontinued, but there might be similar things on the market today. Uh, so I'll just jump right in. Uh, first off, set line, uh, dead stick. Something that you're gonna have just sitting there when you're out jigging in another hole. Um, basically, you might call the fish in while you're jigging a jigging spoon or rattle bait, and they might go over to the dead stick or set line. It's a great way to cover multiple depths, have one set up shallow while you're jigging deep, vice versa, and uh, it's just deadly. You catch twice as many fish in a day with twice as many lines. Uh, my favorite, and I know this isn't made anymore, is a VMC Sure Set treble. If you can see that, one of the hooks is about three times the gap of the others. I know it was originally designed to go on crankbaits, and the bass guys weren't really into them, but us walleye guys found them and started taking them off crankbaits and using them for rattle reels and, and, and dead sticks, and they just work awesome. Reason why, you can have a big minnow, and that extra gap there allows you to still have all three hook points to hook that fish, where with these smaller gap hooks, when you bury one in a minnow, it's, you're gonna have a tough time hooking a fish on that one. So what I'll do with these, if you can find them on I don't know, Amazon or Craigslist or Google or whatever. <laughs> uh, maybe you got a buddy who hoarded a ton like I did before they went out of business. Uh, or were discontinued. VMC is still definitely in business. I just barely skin hook that bait. Um, that minnow will sit there horizontal and swim all day. You can see I put the hook point forward. More often than not, a fish is going to come in and hit that minnow head first, whether it's a sucker minnow or a golden shiner. Um, if you find these hooks online somewhere, I believe this is a number six size. That's, uh, that's probably the best all around for smaller minnows. You'll bump up to a number four when you're using like say a four or five inch golden shiner or sucker minnow. Um, but man, the hookup percentage on that hook is just filthy. And I'll just run a big split shot up above it. My starting point would be about 10 inches above it, and that's something that I use basically as an anchor point to adjust how much action that minnow has. So on a, a tough bite, fish aren't chasing, slide that down to sort of pin how much movement that minnow has side to side. You know, if you just put it four or five inches above the bait, that minnow is pretty stationary and it's pretty easy for a lethargic walleye to just slurp it up. If it's an aggressive bite, you're setting this farther off bottom, bump that split shot up 10, 12 inches. It lets that minnow swim out to the sides of the holes for those more aggressive bites. And I wish, uh, I wish I could get my hands on more of these hooks. Luckily I stocked up on probably too many and no, I'm not sharing. Another great set line option for uh, smaller minnows, fat heads or golden shiners that are maybe three inches would be the biggest size, number four, glow resin treble. 
The reason I say smaller minnows is the biggest size this comes in is a number four. You can see there isn't a huge hook gap on there to allow for those bigger minnows. And then that little epoxy drop that glows is going to eat up another probably third of that hook gap. But these things are sticky sharp and with smaller minnows on tough bites, all it is is just that little bit of a glow dot to help, help them key in on it. Can be absolutely deadly on rattle reels or set lines. So as far as line goes, uh, on my dead sticks, monofilament or fluoro, just because that line and that rod is gonna be sitting there for sometimes it might be an hour before you get a bite while you're actively jigging in a different hole. Mono and fluoro is just less likely to freeze up. It doesn't hold the moisture like braid does, so uh, I'm not, not concerned about getting braid and the feel and whatever. Uh, I also want that little bit of forgiveness for when that fish grabs that bait and I'm not watching this rod, I'm on a different one. Um, I don't want that instant reaction of braid for it to feel and uh, drop the bait. I do like a little bit heavier line on my dead sticks. When I'm actively jigging in clear water, I'll drop down to a six pound test. Uh, but on these dead sticks, because they're gonna be sitting there, because they're more likely to freeze up, I want a little bit beefier line, like an eight pound test. Not necessarily the reel, but just the hole and the line frozen in it. When you go to set that hook, if you're using real light line and you got a skim eighth of an inch of ice on your hole locked up, you could easily break that if you don't kick it out before you set the hook. So. A little bit beefier is good. Now let's get into some uh, some little, not spoon, I guess just jig options is what you'd call them. Now these are stuff that I'll use on a dead stick. They're killer rattle reel setups as well. Um, two of my favorite and probably the most popular are gonna be Tangled. <laughs> uh, custom Jigs and Spins, Original Demon. These things are nasty good. Crazy bright glow, tons of different color patterns. Uh, it's a horizontal, um, well it's a vertical jig, but it gives a horizontal presentation for your minnow. Um, same deal, I'm gonna hook that like I did the other one. Skin hook just barely through the back by the dorsal fin so that minnow hangs horizontal. Now that thing, you can have your rattle reel all night and if it doesn't get bit by a fish, when you pull them up in the morning, this minnow will still be alive, just barely under the skin. And uh, it's, it's awesome because obviously you're not sitting there jigging. Um, the only action coming out of this is that minnow moving. So that's key, same deal, put the hook point forward so when they come to bite, they already got it how they should. Custom Jigs and Spins Demon. There's a number of hooks on the market that are this same kind of style. Uh, another one I got right here, Lindy Frosty, same deal, awesome glow colors. Um, but yeah, that vertical thin profile with the minnow hooked like that is just killer on rattle reels. Now, when we're talking rattle reels, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, you're probably gonna have down more than one. So most people put down four in their house if there's two people, check your local regs, whatever. Um, always put different baits on different reels and set them at different depths. Once you have one of those reels go off, say two or three times in a row compared to the other ones, that's when I start switching over to whatever's on that one that they're biting. Set one like four to six inches off bottom, set the next one about a foot off bottom, next one a foot and a half off bottom, and the final one two or three feet off bottom. Because it just depends on the day. Sometimes they're lethargic and they're coming through just bottom crawling. Um, they want that subtle presentation, not moving much, maybe a plain hook. Um, and other days they're coming through higher up off bottom and they're feeding. So just a little trick. Once one of them goes off two, three times, switch the rest of them over to it. All right, another one of my favorite rattle reel and dead stick options. Don't know if it's made anymore. I think it's called a creep worm. I'm pretty sure this was made by Northland. I think I got it in a little bulk pack at Christopherson's Bait in Alexandria way back in the day. Um, what I like about it, little glow, little something to bring them in, but look at the size of that hook gap. Huge gap, so you can put bigger, you know, three, four inch shiners on here and still not worry about setting the hook and missing those fish and having that hook slide past. Just a crazy big gap. It almost looks like a panfish jig on steroids. Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's called the creep worm. Don't think it's made anymore. I know I've seen options that look very, very similar to it. So you'll find something out there like that. If I can figure something out in the meantime, I'll put it in the description below. 
Now, these are another thing. I don't know if they're made anymore. Sorry, guys. Um, they're these little ice flies, and I think they're made for panfish, but on really, really tough bites. These have saved the day for me on rattle reels. Um, super tough bite, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a plain hook on one or two of the rattle reels, and uh, you know maybe something a little beefier like that demon spoon on one, and then try playing around with a bigger fly, or smaller fly. I guess they're big for flies, small for walleye. Um, the tough part is just finding one that's got just big enough of a hook that you can have a small fat head on there and still have a good hookup ratio. I don't know what it is about these, if it's just that little bit of hair or feather of just kind of breathing down there in the water, but I've had really good luck with these. I actually think it was uh, my buddy Jeremy Shuck that showed me that trick like 15 years ago or something, because I'm an old man now. When all else fails, plain hook with a minnow. I hook them the same way, dorsal fin facing forward. When I'm using a plain hook, there are times where I'll just skin hook them in the tail and let that minnow swim around a little bit too. Um, but my, the biggest thing I gotta say, I guess, is just like I touched on before, split up what you have down there. And when one thing starts working better, switch over to that. If the lines that are set a foot off bottom are getting bit, take the ones that were two, three feet off bottom and lower them down, but use the multiple lines to your advantage to get them dialed in. Uh, if, you're, if you've got rattle reels, do whatever you can to find this fly line. Um, don't go buy a spool of fly line for 20, 30, 40 bucks. These are, uh, what do they call them? Tailings or trailings or uh, fly line ends. It's like a 30 yard strip. I think they go for anywhere from three to five, six bucks. You cannot tangle this stuff up. And if you fish with rattle reels or tip ups, you know that uh, a tangled mess at two in the morning when you're trying to sleep but waking up to a walleye, you most of the time just pull the line and leave it. But this stuff is awesome and it's kind of neutrally buoyant in that it, it doesn't float, but your bait will pull it down super slow and straight. And uh, it's just, it lays real nice when you're throwing it in the fish house on the floor after fighting a fish and drops back down smooth. Um, obviously, fish can see this from a mile away. Tie a snap swivel or a swivel to the end and I'll do a long like eight foot liter of fluoro or mono just for visibility. Um, you know, just gauge that based on water clarity. If it's real dirty water, you can use a three footer or whatever. Super clear 20 foot clarity, 10, 12 foot liter. Um, you know, just to, just to make sure they don't see this beacon shining down there. Now as far as uh, running a leader on these rattle reels, that's one of the times where I will bump up to a heavier size. I don't use anything smaller than 10 pound. Um, if it's not super clear water, I'll even do a 12. The reason being, you're, you don't have a drag system. This is your drag system. So if you're using a real light line and you got a fish at the hole that decides to run, you might not be paying attention. It might be two in the morning and you're, you're so tired you can't keep your eyes open and you just popped up because you had a wall on. Um, your reflexes aren't 100%, so that little beefier line gives you a little bit more power to get them up in, in the hole. It's just easier to work with too. All right, so I realize this video is a little bit more down and dirty than the last one. Thanks for putting up with the guy that just shoveled for two hours and can't think or talk straight. It's time to go make some dinner, kick up my feet, maybe watch some football. Uh, again, thank you for the idea. I can't remember who commented and said, you know, let's see some of your favorite dead stick setups. Um, if there's anything that you want to see, other questions, other videos, leave a comment below. I read every single one and I try to reply to almost all of them. Um, really appreciate you guys watching, dropping comments, likes, and uh, if you're into this, if you're having a good time like I am, hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. So uh, there will actually be some fish in some of my videos coming up here, I promise. Not just shovels. So have a great night, guys.